All right, welcome to the lesson nine lecture. Lesson nine is talking about transforming 2D integrals. So let me start here just saying transforming 2D integrals is a lot like U substitution from your BC class. With U substitution, you translate the limits of integration and solve for dx in terms of du to substitute. For 2D integrals, the equivalent of du is what we call A subscript xy, which is the area conversion factor. So what is the area conversion factor equal? It equals the absolute value of the determinant of that matrix. Okay, you can see what we'll have there then is the absolute value of dx du times dy dv minus dx dv times dy du. So that is our area conversion factor for 2D integrals. Linearizing functions, we did this a long time ago, but just to make sure we remember it here, um, to linearize a function, you have the linearization formulas there um, given to you for linearization, converting, converting a non-line into a line. Okay, these are linear approximations for the x-coordinate of the function and the y-coordinate of the function near the point AB. Okay, these approximations improve as you get closer to a b and then obviously if you move further and further away from a b the approximations get worse and worse okay and then just a little note there for a comparison between linearization and the area conversion factor see the basics b 3 b all right the next thing is the sign of the area conversion factor if you parameterize a curve on uv paper in a counterclockwise way and then plot it on xy's paper sometimes the parameterization remains counterclockwise but sometimes it can change so the deciding factor here is the sign of the area conversion factor. If the area conversion factor is positive, the parameterization will remain counterclockwise. However, if the area conversion factor is negative, the parameterization will now change to clockwise. And if for some reason we get an area conversion factor of zero, then if, it, if you have a smooth curve on UV paper, you're going to see some really weird things happen on XY paper. Okay, Some of those things that we might have, we call maybe a pinch or a cusp, or maybe even a corner, or maybe even a part where the curve overlaps, so an overlapping curve. So those are some examples of things that could happen if your area conversion factor is zero if you change paper from UV paper to XY paper. All right, next thing there is to parameterize a circle. If we have a circle X squared plus Y squared equals 36, what are some different ways to parameterize that circle? I mean, there's a lot of ways to do this. I have a couple examples there. Okay, the first one is the actual just bounds of the circle. The second one is the Bounds of the circle and then all that's inside the circle as well. But again, there's a lot of other ways to do this. We can, you know, we can switch cosine and sine. Uh, we can put negatives out in front and then change our parameterization. Uh, a lot of different ways we can we can do this. We can uh, multiply or divide t by some number and then change our t bounds. So lots of ways. These are just a couple basic ways to do that. Okay. And on the second page here, all we got is a couple examples of what you can expect to be doing by hand in this chapter. So the first example says, find the value of the double integral above the region R of x squared plus y squared dx dy for the region bounded by the ellipse, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. The first thing we should immediately plan on doing is parameterizing that ellipse. And of course, I'm going to do this in a counterclockwise manner. So x of RT... For our cosine t, y of rt is 3r sine t. And of course, our bounds here, we're going to have t going from 0 to 2 pi. And we're going to have r running from 0 to 1 to encapsulate not only the bounds <coughs> of the ellipse, but on everything inside the ellipse as well. Next thing we're going to do is our area conversion factor. Uh, 
So it's going to be the absolute value of, and remember the formula that we had here on the top of the first page. So dx du minus dy times dy dv minus dx dv times dy du. Okay, of course here we're not using u's and v's, we're using r's and t's, but it's the same principle. Instead of using, like I said, instead of using u's and v's, we're using r's and t's. So that would be 4 cosine t, 3 sine t, negative 4 r sine t, and then 3 r cosine t. Taking the determinant there, we would get 12 r square, uh, sorry, cosine squared t, and then minus a negative, which turned out to be a positive, 12 r sine squared t. And of course, if we factor out a 12 r, we get cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1, so it's just the absolute value of 12 r. Since r is always going to be positive here, we don't need the absolute value bars anymore. We can just say, all right, our area conversion factor must just be 12r, since r is always going to be positive running from 0 to 1. Except, of course, when it's 0. All right, so now we can actually begin our work here. So setting up our new integral, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, The integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus y squared times our area conversion factor, 12r, and then I got dr dt. Obviously, you can switch those bounds and make them dt dr if you want. Okay, and then substituting x squared and y squared in, remember, x is 4r cosine t, and y is 3r sine t. And I'm going to do a lot more simplifying before I actually do the integration here. So we have 16r squared cosine squared plus 9r squared sine squared times 12r. Taking out an r squared, we actually get 12r cubed. So I taking out the r squared and multiplying it by 12r, we get 12r cubed. And then what's left here, I'm going to split up into 7 cosine squared plus 9 cosine squared, and then plus the 9 sine squared. I'm sure you can see why I'm doing that. So we can get a cosine squared plus sine squared there. So this, if we take on a 9 there, we get 9 times sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 9 times 1. So that just becomes 9. Okay, so now I can write this as our integral, our double integral, of 12r cubed times 7 cosine squared plus 9. And at this point, we're almost ready to start doing our integration. I would do one more line of simplifying here by distributing the 12r cubed. So that would give me 84r cubed cosine squared plus 108r cubed. All right, now we can take the integral with respect to r. So that would be 84 r to the fourth over 4, which is 21 r to the fourth. OK, 
cosine squared, plus 108 r to the fourth over four, or 27 r to the fourth, from zero to one, Substituting our 1 in, maybe we get 21 cosine squared t plus 27. And then substituting 0 in, we would just get 0. Okay, now I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two separate integrals. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 21 cosine squared plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 27. In order to do cosine squared, you probably learned this back in, probably in BC, I would assume. Uh, we're actually going to use a, an angle, a double angle formula here. And what that's going to end up turning out to be if we change it into cosine 2t plus 1 over 2. So that's coming from the double angle formula of cosine 2t. Actually, I'll write this down for you. If you remember the double angle formulas from your, probably from your pre-calc days. <clears throat> there are actually three formulas for cosine of 2 theta. And one of them is that equals 2 cosine squared minus 1. So if you're trying to solve that for cosine squared, you can add 1 divided by 2, and then you can replace cosine squared with cosine 2t plus 1 over 2. dt. The second integral just works out to be 54 pi. It's just a rectangle with a height of 2 pi and a length of 27. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and take out the 1 half from the first part as well, So and a 21. So I have 21 over 2. Our integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine 2t plus 1 dt plus 54 pi. And at this point, it should be a fairly simple integration. We can use u substitution if you want to on the 2t, but you probably won't need to. Our integral is going to be 1 half sine 2t. The integral of 1 is just t. And that's from 0 to 2 pi. And then don't forget your plus 54 pi. So this works out to be 21 over 2 times the sine of 4 pi is 0, and then plus 2 pi minus 21 over 2. Again, the sine of 0 is 0, so times 0 plus 54 pi. So we get 21 pi plus 54 pi. Our final answer here is 75 pi. So the double integral above the region r of x squared plus y squared uh, for the region bounded by that ellipse is 75 pi. All right, one last problem here. This one's a little bit less complicated than the one we just did. All right, find the area of the parallelogram bounded by those four equations by switching to UV paper and evaluating a double integral. I mean, are there other ways to do this geometrically? Absolutely. Um, but we, you know, we want to see how this works out using our conversion factor. So first thing we see is we have two equations that are x plus y equals. All right, so I'm going to say let x plus y 
equal u, and u is going to run from 1 to 2. And then we have two, two x minus 3y equations. So I'm going to say let 2x minus 3y equal v. And v is going to run from 2 to 5. Okay. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to play around with these equations a little bit and try to solve them for x and y. I'm going to start here by trying to eliminate the y's. So I'm going to multiply that purple equation by 3 and then add my equations together. So 3x plus 2x is 5x. Here's what I'm doing here. Multiply this by 3, and then I get 5x. 3y minus 3y cancels out. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. And that equals 3u plus 1v. Solving that for x, I get 3 fifths u plus 1 fifth v. So x equals 3 fifths u plus 1 fifth v. Okay, to solve for y, I'm going to take what I just got for x and put that back into the first equation I have here. So 3 fifths u plus 1 fifth v plus y equals u. Subtracting to solve for y, we get u minus 3 fifths u, which is 2 fifths u, minus 1 fifth v. All right, so these two equations here and here are our conversions for x and y. And now we're going to use that to find our area conversion factor, axy. Remember, it's the absolute value of the determinant. So we have our derivative of x with respect to u, derivative of x with respect to v, derivative of y with respect to u, and derivative of y with respect to v. So that gives us negative 3 25ths minus 2 25ths, which is negative 5 25ths, which we can reduce down to 1 5th. And remember, the absolute value of that, so positive 1 5th is our area conversion factor. All right, so now we can set up our integral. So it's going to be our double integral, and we're going to do, what's that, u being the outside, 1 to 2, and v being the inside, 2 to 5. Of just our area conversion factor, I did dv du. And from here, it's going to be a pretty simple integration. So we're going to integrate first with respect to v. So this gives us v over 5. So put in 5 there, we get 1 minus 2 fifths. Which is, of course, 3 fifths. And integrating there, we get 3 fifths u. Which now gives us 6 fifths minus 3 fifths, which is, of course, 3 fifths. So that would be the area of that parallelogram bounded by those four lines, which we probably could have found another way geometrically, but we did that using conversions to UV paper. That'll do it for lesson nine.